Order! 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 You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Now then, the Justice Secretary, Liz Truss, will give a statement in Parliament on just what happened in Birmingham prison at the end of last week after the worst riot there since Strange Ways in Manchester in 1990. So just what's going on in the prison system? Well, I'm joined now by the Justice Select Committee Chair, Bob Neal, and uh, obviously knows a lot about what's going on in the system because you warned about the pressure cooker that was, that was building back in May, did you not? Well, yes, uh, sadly, our Select Committee, on a cross-party basis, issued a report saying that the safety situation in prisons was getting at crisis point. Uh, we had a debate about that in September uh, in, when Parliament came back, when we stressed that point. Uh, and unfortunately, all those pressures that we said we're building up came to pass. So what's important now is that we get a real grip of this situation, both in the short term, but also in the long term, deal with the underlying problem that we identified, which is lack of prison officers, um, lack of recruitment, uh, lack of retaining experienced prison officers and also I think we have to bite the bullet that can you really expect this number of people to be going into our prison system uh, and in the sort of prisons that we currently have and have any real attempt at reforming them because you can't reform people if they're banged up 23 hours a day and you can't get them out to the drugs testing to the education courses to the training that you want to do so we need to think very long and hard for the future about what are our prisons actually for and how many people do we really need to send to prison as opposed to other forms of genuine punishment in I mean, other ways? So, I mean, and big thoughts that have been thought for uh, uh, quite a long time, but we're at this situation now yeah. where we seem a million miles away from that, from the rehabilitation, from not sending as many people to prison. We are where we are. And you get a situation like that in Birmingham and indeed uh, in lesser cases in, in many yeah. other prisons around the country. What do you want to hear from Liz Truss tomorrow? I mean, we know already she's talked about more recruitment. Yeah. Well, I think she's, she has actually started in the right direction. We have to start from the basis that, frankly, we made a mistake by reducing the number of prison officers by too many. Uh, so that does have to be reversed. She has moved already to get the extra funding to get 2,500 extra prison officers. So overdid officers. the cuts? I'm afraid the cuts were overdone. I think the, the more we've seen the evidence, that's the reality of it. Because so could, I mean, that's, that goes back to what? Ken Clark, Chris Grayling? That was during that period. And I think the problem was, I know Ken Clark had hoped that we would reduce the prison population at the same time. That didn't come to pass, and that's where it's gone wrong. So Liz is right now to be getting people back. First of all, I'm sure she'll give us a heads up on what actually happened and how it was dealt with. Fair to say that it was contained very efficiently uh, by the Trojan response teams that they sent in from elsewhere. That's, that's good news. And so far, we haven't seen repeat events, but we need to monitor that. But we need to have a full inquiry as to exactly what went wrong there, how keys were obtained and so forth, how security was breached. Secondly, we'll have to have a look about what pressures does that put on the estate, because this is a big prison, much of which is out of commission for a period whilst it is repaired. That puts pressures on. Thirdly, we want to have more details about how we're speeding up the recruitment process and what more can we do to stop experienced officers working, walking away. So you're saying the jury's out on, on this trust. Is that, is that what you're saying there? Because right, we mentioned your report. It was sitting on her desk when she took over, presumably, as Justice Secretary. I think should, she, should she have acted on it or hasn't she had enough time? I think in Venice she has acted as swiftly as she has within the time available uh, because she went to, um, to the rest of the Cabinet, obtained uh, you know, some £500 million, the only actually, actually the only department that got extra money in the autumn spending round to pay for those additional officers, but it does take time to train them up. And we're starting from a very um, shaky uh, and very low base, that's the real worry. So we've got to make sure that perhaps we can do some sensible things straight away whilst we're getting those officers through. We, we get people recalled to prison for very minor technical breaches. I think we could look very quickly at the administrative rules about that. So it's only if it's something really serious that you get recalled. We could be looking sensibly uh, about making more your release of non-violent people who are doing well in prison on temporary licence. We could also look at the position of the uh, IPP pr but Just let me go on that. I mean, do you so think, there's quite do you, a lot I mean, we could do. It's interesting do. what you're saying. A lot of people do, do send, particularly people who've had experience in that Justice Secretary role. They say we're sending too many people to prison, but you know how that plays on the streets. It plays badly. If you ask people what they would like to see in terms of crackdown on law and order, in terms of dealing with criminals, they say, well, by and large, they say tougher sentences. 
I think that's where there's an obligation on us as politicians to speak out and just say, that actually doesn't fit with the fact really, of every person that's a victim of that reoffending. So if you can turn people around, which does involve getting involved with them earlier, uh, you know, much better probation services, much more joined up interventions with younger people, but also when they're in prison, actually making sure they're not locked up in their cells where they get involved in gang culture, taking spice, taking yeah. drugs, That's actually real issue. rehabilitation, then actually that will mean fewer offences, fewer victims of crime. I think the public will be in favour of that. Last order is uh, in, in the uh, constituents you represent, there's an MP, and I'm talking about Chris Grayling, who's now Transport Secretary, you mentioned him as Justice Secretary. You, you've said you think he should look to his position for his handling of the sudden strike. Uh, well, my particular concern with Chris, to be, to be accurate, Dermot, was around the franchise for South Eastern Trains, uh, which is the first one that comes up, where I believe the London Suburban Services should actually be integrated with Transport for London. And I think that applies to Southern too, because both the South Eastern and the Southern franchise are huge, sprawling franchises that I think are impossible um, to manage. Uh, the problem with uh, the Southern strike, as I do have constituencies who know and use that, it is that this is, I fear, a political strike. This is one where the uh, rail unions have made it very clear they're out to confront the government over this. And that's where I think it's not right that people who don't have their jobs at risk, because no one is going to be losing a job over this, are actually putting people who my constituents know out of work. And I've had people write to me and say, oh, I'm a Southern rail user, I have lost a job because of this strike. I think on this one, it's the behaviour of the unions, which is the real cause of the problem. Bob Nail, good to see you. Thank you very much indeed. Have a Merry Christmas, uh, Chair you know. of the Justice Select Committee. There.